Basically, yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> you just a book to the box. <laughs> Hello, Dr. Payam. Alright, thanks for coming. And today I'll present another one of my favorite proofs. I will show you that the real numbers are uncountable. So you cannot count them. It's like a Halloween special. Do not count the uncountable. <laughs> Whatever that means. But before I do that, let me just quickly remind you, you know, what counting is, how to count if you want. Uh, so, of course, we can count the natural numbers because if this is one, two, three, even if it is a zero, etc., etc., then we can count it. What does that mean? You can associate the number one to one, then associate the number two to two, associate the number three to three, etc., etc. It turns out we can also count the integers. So what if you have something like that? You know, 0, 1, 2, 3, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. You can also count the real numbers because you know you can associate the number 1 to 0, then the second element is this, then the third element is this, then the fourth element is this, etc. etc. Otherwise, you can, if you want to associate your fingers to each, you know, uh, uh, each integer. You know. It turns out you can also count the rational numbers in the following way. Namely, list the rational numbers by their denominator. So here you have any number with denominator 1, any number with denominator 2, so 1 half, 2 halves, 3 halves, 4 halves. Etc. Any number with denominator three, one third, two thirds, three thirds, etc. And you continue denominator four, denominator five, etc., etc. And you'll see basically you can list any positive, um, let's call it any positive rational number. And the way you can associate them is if you want, just go like a snake. This is the first element, this is the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, etc., etc. Of course, there might be some redundancies because 1 is the same as 2 over 2, but it's okay to double count because in the end you still counted all of them. Or if you want to be really rigorous, let's just skip the ones you double counted. So 1, 2, 1 half, 3, 1 third, 4, 3 halves, 2 thirds one-fourth, etc, etc. So, the point is, if you had an infinite amount of time, you would still be able to count all the rational numbers. However, it turns out for the real numbers, they're so big that even if you had an infinite amount of time, you still can't count them. And in fact, here's my claim. Even the small interval, 0, 1, is uncountable. Da, 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 da. There should be like thunder and bats going on and stuff. And as a result, because this little chunk is uncountable, because you cannot even count the whole chunk, 0 to 1, the whole real numbers are also uncountable. And, and here's the proof, and it's based on this famous technique called the Cantor diagonal argument. And you'll see why. So suppose we can list all the real numbers. Or all the numbers between 0 and 1. List all the numbers in 0, 1. So let's just write a list. So a1. And let's just expand them in decimal notation. So 0 0.A11, A12, A13, A2 is 0 0.A21, A22, A23, A3 is 0 0.A31, A32, A33, etc., etc., where the AIJs are just digits between 0 and 9. So let me give you a concrete example because I, whenever I see double indices, I almost I automatically fall asleep. So let me give you, you know, for example, 
let's just list them. You know, five one four seven eight five seven zero point six one nine two six three four zero point and that's Sia's number. One two three one two three three one two three one two three three again. Okay. Now, as I said, it's called a diagonal argument, so maybe we should consider a diagonal number. Consider the fine number 0 0.A11, A22, A33. Or, for example, in this case, it would be you know, 0 0.513, etc., etc. So you're just literally going down the diagonal. Consider uh, D, which is the diagonal number, is just 0 0.A11, A22, A33. So here, as I said, for example, D would be 0 0.513, etc., etc. And now, you want to construct, I, I'm claiming there is some number that's not in the list. So, consider the following number. Maybe construct is better word because we're constructing something. The following number, number x, x, which you can write it as x being 0 0.x1, x2, x3, as follows. Namely, all you need to do is that every digit of x is not the same as the digit of d. Namely, with the following, with the property, that xi is never equal to aii. So, and also, just as a technicality, and we never want the xi to be 9. So here's an example. Okay. If d is 0 0.513, etc., etc., we want x to be 0 point something, but the first digit of x is anything other than 5 and 9. For example, we can have it, you know, a 4. The second digit of x is anything other than 1 and 9, so let's say I have 2, and the third digit of x is anything other than 3 and 9, so for example 6. And you can continue, and of course you can construct such a digit, such a number, because, you know, uh, other than 5 and 9, there's still, you know, 8 other possibilities. So, you know, it's definitely possible to construct this number, and I'm claiming that x is never on this list. So claim x is not on the list. Let's go back here. So x, as I said, is 0 0.x1, x2, x3. Well, let's see. Could x be equal to a1? Well, if it is, then the first digit of x would be equal to the first digit of a1. But look, we constructed x1 precisely such that the first digit of x is not equal to a11. So x cannot be equal to a1. Okay, so x is not equal to a1. Well, could x be equal to a2? Well, if it were true, then the second digit of x would be equal to the second digit of a2. But as I said, we constructed x such that x2 is not equal to a22. Okay, it's not on this equal to a2. What about the th x3? Well, is x equal to a3? Well, no, because otherwise the third digit of x would be equal to the third digit of a3. Uh, and therefore, x cannot be equal to a3. 
So if you, con if you continue this way, you actually find that x is not equal to a1, is not equal to a2, is not equal to a3, etc., etc. Therefore, x is not equal to any of those numbers. And therefore, it's not on the list. That's basically the gist. So now, uh, no, uh, if x is equal to ai, for some i, then, as I said, the ith digit of x would be equal to the ith digit of ai, sorry, ith digit of x, ith digit of ai, by construction. Okay. And that's for contradiction. So we write those two arrows for contradiction. And then we're done. Why? Because we assume that we can list all the numbers, but every but we just shown that there's one number, even if we counted all the real numbers, there will always be one that's missing. And therefore, we're done. So, yeah. <laughs> basically, yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> you just have to show the box. <laughs> and that's all we showed. We said, you know, suppose we can list all the real numbers, and we just found, you know, it, it contradicts the fact that we can list all the real numbers. But one, cool. but one, little, one little thing uh, <laughs> before we <laughs> end. Why? Um, why did we have that uh, xi is not equal to zero, 9? Just to avoid a situation like this, just to avoid the fact that 0 0.9999, okay, suppose we write it in this way, it actually turns out that it equals to 1000. Zero, zero, zero. And the reason is technically involves geometric series, but you can think of 0 0.99999. Well, technically it's 1 minus 0 0.0001. Right? And but this is so small it actually equals to 0, and that equals to 1. So we want to make sure it's not equal, you know. You don't have this problem that so we just just to be sure we uh, we said all the digits have to be not equal to nine and just a little query so just a cookie for your thoughts or an oreo for your thoughts well we said that so the real numbers must be much much bigger than the natural numbers because we can count the natural numbers but we cannot count the real numbers and you might say are there sets bigger than the real numbers Yes, in fact, there are. For example, the functions from the real numbers to real numbers are actually strictly bigger than the real numbers. And that's why calculus is so confusing, because there's so many more functions we can talk about than we, when we do have real numbers. So, but that's something for a different time.